previously on board. We are board. very happy to speak to Prof Ken Buffard, Head of Trauma at Mill Park Hospital in Johannesburg, before we put Prof on the line. Enjoy big Jen as well. Yeah. Yep. The reason why we're talking to Prof Buffard this afternoon is because seven-time Formula One world champ Michael Schumacher, okay, well, prior to the show, prior to going on air, he was still in an induced coma one month after his skiing accident in the French Alps. There's been a lot of speculation as to his condition. Yesterday, French media reporting that he was being woken up from his coma. It seems to be Johnny reporting in sport this afternoon that that is the case today. But doctors still not willing to speculate on the 45-year-old's condition. And, you know, we don't want to speculate here either, but we'd like to shed a bit more light on the subject, which is why we speak to Prof Boffard this afternoon. Prof, good afternoon and welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me, and hi to your listeners. Hi there, thank you. And yeah, so let's kick it off. Um, he's been in a, in a coma f- for a month, um, an induced coma. Uh, what sort of head injury does one have to sustain that would warrant them doing something like that? Okay, really just by way of introduction, you sprain your ankle, your ankle swells up. If you walk on it, it hurts even more, so you rest it, you, you lift it up in the air to let the swelling go out. The brain is no different. If you injure it, it can bleed, you can get bruising inside, and it can swell up. The trouble is that the brain is covered in a skull, which is rock hard, and it's a box. And when the brain swells up, it's got nowhere to go. And so the pressure rises, and you can get much more brain damage. We call it secondary brain damage. So when you bang your head, you don't have the ability to put your foot up on a chair. We've got to find a way of cutting the swelling down on the brain. And that means removing any blood clots using an operation, and that's what he had. And then when the brain swells up, you have to rest it. We do that by putting somebody on a machine, and and we can't even have them coughing, because every time you cough, the pressure in the brain goes up. So we use what most people would understand as an anesthetic. And we put the people to sleep, and they stay asleep until such time you measure the brain pressure, it's come down, and then you can wake them up. And just like an anesthetic, you're using drugs. As you want somebody to wake up, you withdraw the drugs. And although it's quite some time down the line, it's a month now, yeah. uh, they've, uh, and I should say that while somebody's asleep, you, you really can't tell how well the brain is doing. So now's the time. The swelling if it's going to go down has gone down. So now you wean the drugs, slow them down, and see how much he wakes up. And it's very, very difficult to predict. He's been asleep for a long time. It says to me that the pressures were high for a very long time and that there was, therefore, quite a lot of secondary damage. Uh, Time time will tell. Uh, Prof, uh, bringing him out of this coma, could it take a long time? Yes, it can, because firstly, the drugs that have been on board for a month have got to get out of the system more drugs you put in, the longer the period, the longer it takes to get them out. The other is we don't know how much the brain is going to work, so it could take several weeks or even several months. And yeah, as you said, the surgeons performed um, two operations. I was I was reading reports in, in the media that you know, doctors unwilling to speculate because they say, and it's hard to be sure when something like this happens, whether they'll make a full recovery because they say the longer you are in a coma, obviously the more serious the injury is, but people have been in comas for a long time and recovered fully. Yes, they have. Uh, You don't want to wake people up while they have swelling. The more damage in general, the more swelling. So what it does say to me is if it's taken a month, there's been quite a lot of additional damage. We... We don't know that much about the brain. We know we only use 20% of it. You could argue surgeons use less than that because I'm a surgeon and I can say yeah. that. Yeah, surgeons and our sports reader, John Walland. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, I don't know that surgeons can all read, but then again, I just, can say that from... Yeah, I tell you, the <laughs> level of brain functioning on this show is very low. Just ignore him, probably. <laughs> Um, which is also useful because when we get hit on the head, we don't notice. Yes. But we don't know which 20% of the brain is, is the critical bit. And so it's almost impossible to predict. I'd say under two years, I would be very reluctant to give a, a long-term outcome. Prof, at what point do you determine whether to elect to uh, have an induced coma situation? Um, I mean, we know he was put into that medically induced coma by the doctors at that clinic. Um, but... At what stage? Because we understand that when he did present, he was still compass mentis. So how do you determine 
where to go from there? That's correct. When he had his initial injury and he was wearing a helmet, and I doubt that he would have survived if he wasn't, but... Uh, and, and the investigators have actually been studying the, the uh, film footage from the helmet-mounted camera that he had. Um, just like when you sprain your ankle, initially it may be sore, but you can walk on it, and then it swells up over the next day or so. And that's exactly what happens with the brain. Uh, he was transferred to a world-renowned unit. It's extremely competent. And they would have been aware of this. And what they can do, and I'm sure they have done, is you put a small pressure probe actually into the brain area and measure the pressures. And as soon as you see the pressures going up beyond a certain point, you start introducing drugs uh, to try and get the, that swelling down. And if that doesn't work, the next stage is that you effectively make a drug-induced coma so that whatever pressure you have, the person doesn't make it higher by coughing and and that sort of thing. Would he have been aware what was happening to him? I would doubt it. Um, Initially, he clearly was aware, but then uh, the normal thing is one lapses into unconsciousness and remember that he would have been sore as well, so he would have been getting drugs for pain as much as anything else. Uh, yes, Johnny. Yeah, Prof, I was going to ask you, you know, um, in, in the wake of this, um, you kazavac to the hospital uh, following this trauma, uh, and, and you do say the surgeons are, are very good in that country. Uh, compared to our surgeons over here, I think uh, you do see a, a heck of a lot more trauma, don't you, in this kind of situation, whereas on a ski resort, not, you know, this kind of incident doesn't happen on, on a regular basis. Um, I'm not sure that it doesn't happen on a regular basis because the best bone surgeons around are in the ski areas because people okay. break their legs with monotonous regularity. Um, what you need is something called a trauma system. Any hospital can open a casualty. We're short of neurosurgeons. Not every hospital has, has brain surgery ability. And the end result is that your nearest hospital may be completely inappropriate for your disease. Right. And so what the French have done to some extent, um, and what we have done in South Africa, and we're actually ahead of them, yes. is we have classified trauma ho hospitals that can take trauma into essentially three levels. And a level one center is a major academic tied center. Best way of putting it is you never ever have to refer a patient away. Uh, a level two center is a good general hospital. Um, many of them around both provincial and private. We're talking things like Helen Joseph Hospital if we're talking provincial. And level three hospitals are GP run cottage hospitals. And in fact, he was taken to a level two hospital to start with. They recognized their problem and transferred him through to the level one very quickly. Okay. Sadly, this doesn't happen in South Africa because most of the private hospitals and the only group that has actually gone into national standards is Netcare, where they do have level one, level two, level three trauma centers, which are internationally standardized. Nobody else does. Um, the patient needs to go through to the right hospital at the right time. Mm. And if that means bypassing the hospital that they have their crash opposite, so be it. Mm. She's mm. so interesting. Uh, Prof, uh, last question from my side. So they're bringing him out of the coma today, we hear. Um, what kind of symptoms or side effects does a person display after being in a coma for such a, a period of time, usually? Varies from no response at all, which is a bad idea, to usually people will lighten up, and the commonest thing is restlessness, completely purposeless restless, restlessness, moving around in the bed, uh, random movements and then as you improve you start if, if you touch someone they realize where you're touching them and somewhere later and he's probably got and will keep initially an artificial breathing tube which stops him talking so that will stay for the time being I'm sure and therefore uh, you, you start off with nothing then you start movements then you go purposeful and after that you start trying to express yourself in whatever way uh, I think it's going to take some months before we're at that point. Okay. okay. Fascinating. Thanks very much indeed, Prof. Uh, Kenneth Boffard, Head of Trauma, Milk Park, Joe Big Jen. Thank you Go. very much for your insights this Great afternoon, insight. Prof. We really appreciate it. All the best, guys. Have a lovely day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Here we go. Really interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Really interesting. Mm. And mm. yeah, as Johnny's reporting in sport this afternoon, they are, look, it looks like. Reducing his sedation. They're reducing Michael Schumacher's sedation and bringing him out, him out of a mm. coma to assess how bad that trauma actually is. Come <laughs>